It's early May in Oklahoma, and grasses, sedges, and broadleaves are becoming highly visible in the landscape. We're going to talk about different plant materials that some people will call weeds, and yet other people will call beneficial plants in this segment. A weed is simply a plant growing out of place. It's not a uh, judgment on the plant itself, but rather where it's placed and in the situation in which we find it. We're going to review some of the common broadleaf weeds and or broadleaf plants in this particular segment. First, we want to take a look at cutleaf evening primrose. It's a uh, winter annual that's in flower now. And many people will notice the uh, primrose flower. It's very similar to the perennial desirable prim primrose that comes in pink or white. This is particularly a, a weedy plant in clear or open areas such as vegetable gardens, but where turf provides competition, it's seldom a weed. The next plant we're gonna look at is mare's tail or horseweed. And it is a summer annual. It actually germinates in the fall of the year, so some people will call it a biennial. It, it really depends. It can germinate again in spring, and it will tolerate very close mowing to an inch, and yet if left unmowed, it can be found at four and five feet tall. It's a prolific seed producer and can produce uh, tens of thousands of seed. So this is mare's tail or horseweed. Next, we're going to take a look at the winter annual broadleaf Carolina geranium. It's also called crane's bill. And once it's flowered and set a seed capsule, you can look and, and take a look at the seed capsule and realize why it is called crane's bill, because it does resemble the bill of the bird crane. It's a member of the geranium family, and it's very obvious with the, the leaves why that is so. And if you mash the weeds of the, of the Carolina geranium, it does produce the typical geranium smell. So it's very diagnostic uh, with the smell. This plant here is called prostrate knotweed. Now there's a similar plant to it called prostrate spurge. It's not closely related, but it can look similar. Prostrate knotweed germinates usually in February or very late winter in Oklahoma. It produces a clear watery sap if you break the leaves or stems. Because it is prostrate and grows down to the ground, prostrate knotweed, um, it will be confused with prostrate spurge. Even though we don't have a prostrate spurge plant to show here next to it, if you break the stem of prostrate spurge, a euphorbia family member, it will produce a milky white sap. So this is a summer annual germinating under very cold conditions, but it loses its winter hardiness and it's killed out by the frost in the fall of the year. Our next plant to be reviewed is henbit. Henbit is a winter annual broadleaf plant and it is a member of the mint family and one of the diagnostic measure or one of the diagnostic features of mint family members is to break the stem and you can roll the stem between your thumb and forefingers and you'll feel the square shaped stem. Uh, most of the mint family members have square shaped stems and when it's in flower, you will recognize the typical mint family member uh, flower, but it doesn't have a strong smell like most mint family members do. This is a winter annual and very common uh, in warm season grass lawns and flowers in April and May and then dies out in the heat of late spring or early summer. Our next plant is Virginia buttonweed. It's a perennial. It has very fleshy stems and it has a high water use rate. While it can be native to Oklahoma, it's usually only found in the southeastern part of the state. However, it's invasive in the nursery trade and many people can bring it into their landscapes with nursery ornamentals. And oftentimes I'll find it propagating itself right around sprinkler heads that are very moist around ornamental or, or turf plant materials. It has a sister species that's much more common in Oklahoma uh, and much more drought tolerant, and that's called poor joe. But in this case, this very prostrate diodia here is Virginia buttonweed. It will produce white flowers in the axils of the leaves later in the spring. The next plant we'd like to review is a member of the pigweed group. The pigweed group is very, very diverse. In our garden situations, many of us are familiar with red root pigweed, but the group is actually much larger. There are examples like prostrate pigweed, 
spiny amaranth, palmer amaranth, and many of these species can interhybridize, so you can have hybrids and not even know that you're looking at it. So rather than uh, getting real specific on these, we'll just talk about it being uh, the pigweed group. They're very diverse. Some of them can tolerate very close mowing down to an inch, and yet if you don't mow them, they can grow to several feet shoulder high. Very drought tolerant, very heat tolerant plant uh, adapted throughout the state of Oklahoma. There's two composite family members that are very common in Oklahoma that are winter annuals that will flower in the month of May. First of those is prickly lettuce and the leaves look somewhat like a dandelion. These will bolt and produce flowers. Both of these members, the south thistle and the prickly lettuce, I'm holding the prickly lettuce, if you break the leaves they will produce a milky white sap very similar to dandelion. So you, we can't use the uh, milky white sap as a definition between the two. But prickly lettuce will have a row of soft spines down the mid vein on the bottom and they're not real sharp spines. And actually I'm not getting poked much by the prickly lettuce. But the south thistle uh, is quite offensive with its spiny leaves and I won't grab it very firmly. It has undulating margins. Sometimes you'll see them deeply lobed, but usually not, at least not on the, the lowest leaves. And they're difficult to distinguish for a lot of people. Sometimes you'll see a very shiny upper leaf surface for the south thistle with the uh, prickly lettuce not having as shiny of a leaf surface. But these are two common winter annuals that are oftentimes confused in the Oklahoma lawns in the spring. Next I'd like to show you pepperweed. There's several pepperweed species that are present in Oklahoma and they produce a prolific seed head and here's the uh, peppery seed head for which the uh, species are named. There's several species there and it's a winter annual broadleaf plant that flowers in spring and rapidly sets seed and dies out in late spring. Also at this time of year, we can see uh, the seed capsules on Shepherd's Purse, and there we can see the actual namesake of the plant, the, the seed capsule that gives it its name, Shepherd's Purse, because it does look like a sewn sheep bladder, which was the Shepherd's Purse. Mm -hmm. 